Wow. God bless everybody. Thank you for uh, coming out here this morning and partaking of what God is doing. God's doing a great thing. Amen. And I look out and I see some wonderful, wonderful soldiers of Christ. Amen. First of all, it's an honor and privilege to be in the part of Rescue Revive Ministries. Uh, when I came into Rescue Revive Ministries, I got a text from Pastor Dominic telling me to get a hold of ASP. And I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I'll get into that in a minute. But I just first want to say, I wish I could stand up here and tell you that I came into the ministry with open arms. I didn't. I didn't want nothing to do with the ministry. I really didn't. I just wanted to be a Christian. I got saved. I come from the pit. I'm not going to go into it, but you can imagine the Lord took me out of the pit and transformed my life by the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Anyways, uh, I started working with Father Hearts Ministries. That's an uh, evangelist ministry here in Rochester. I just wanted to serve. But I didn't want to be behind this, and I didn't want to be in the pulpit. I just wanted to kind of hide in the shadows because I was so beaten up by sin and Satan. I felt so humiliated, and I just felt so condemned. I had a lot of issues. I really worked a lot in my life in four years. So I started working with Father Hearts Ministries, and all I wanted to do was serve. So when I did it, I just broke open boxes and just put food on the table. That's all I did. But see, God has a way of doing things, leading your life, because He's preparing you for something down the road. I had no idea what God was going to do in my life. No clue. So I just worked with Father Hearts, and one day Father Hearts goes to the best service and goes, Man, you're here, you're here all the time. Who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm Randy. I just want to serve, brother. So I did for, I don't know, hundred months, quite a few months. And uh, lo and behold, one day, I'll just break this down real quick. Um, my ministry is, is all a miracle from God. It really is. I know that. Um, your ministry should be. It should come from God. I love what Pastor Dominic always says. He says, God's fingerprint should be on your ministry, on your life. You should always see the tracks of Jesus in your ministry. That's how you know God is with you. Amen? So, uh, my pastor, uh, Pastor Dan Stoll, a wonderful brother, he's part of the reason I'm here. Pastor Don is part of the reason I'm here. Uh, he said, Randy, would you like to go to a church and represent the lamp? Because I can't go. I'm like, whoa, what? I just started going to this church this is a few months. I said, yeah, I'll go, brother. There's some little inner city church in Rochester. And uh, it was predominantly black church. I was like the only white person in the whole church. Except two older guys. Forget it. So I didn't know anything about anything, and I told him who I was, and we did the praise and worship, and it was really powerful. And then they had me sit up in the front, which I didn't like that, so I wanted to be in the back. But God was training me to get up in the front. So a pastor goes and he says, young man, he says, God has a word for you. I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> so he called me up to him. Now, this man had no idea who I was. He knew nothing what God has been speaking in my heart a few months back. He says, when are you going to go pray? The Lord wants to know, when are you going to go pray for the drug addicts, the alcoholics, the prostitutes, the down and out, the Rochester, New York? I go, whoa. <laughs> because that's exactly what God told me to do. And I said, Lord, I don't want to do that. Somebody else. I don't want to do this. Please, get somebody else. <laughs> But the Bible says that the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. When God calls you, that's it. You're called. And He's going to hound you and He's going to work on you. And He used this old black preacher to get me to do what He called me to do. I fell on my knees crying because I knew the power of God was speaking to this guy. I go, wow. So, anyways, the next day, me and another young lady, she's Gone now, she's in Florida. Her the Lord used her with me. We we started Camry. And we started going we, Camry wasn't even existent at the time. We just went out to the streets of Rochester and I felt the Lord tell us to go to the Catholic Family Center downtown. It's one of the largest uh, outpatient drug have, rehab programs in Rochester, New York, all along the mental illness. So they had it all there. Everybody that Jesus came to set free was there. We started praying. We ended up praying with 64 people that morning, that, that morning at 8 o'clock in the morning. 64 people just called us. Can I have prayer? Can I have prayer? It was unbelievable. We go, wow. So we just pursued that. And then the Lord just had, like Pastor Dominic said, he'll, he'll, he'll stretch it. 
It'll start scratching you. So he needs to start putting my heart to our other outpatients. So we used to go five days a week, every day, for almost a year, to the outpatient programs here in Rochester, praying for the for the recovering drug addicts, the alcoholics, people that were trying to find help. We were trying to give them spiritual help. And we would stand in front of the rehabs, just praying for them. Just praying for them. They would come up and people would just come and pray with us. And they loved us being there. And then the Lord said, start giving them Bibles. I know how to get Bibles. I got a phone call. This lady said that the Lord told her to get a hold of me because I need Bibles. I couldn't believe it. She gave me about 100 Bibles. I had like 100 Bibles. So I took them down in front of the Catholic family center. This is all true with what's happening. And um, so I started giving out Bibles. And it, it got to a point where even the council would be coming out wanting Bibles. It was unbelievable what God was doing. It was all God. Then God started getting us to go to hospitals. We went to hospitals and we were praying for people. My ministry started out with prayer. Prayer, all prayer. No preaching, just prayer. And then we started doing what Vanjie with, 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 um, Ulo was going to talk about. Giving out tracts. We started doing that. And, and it just started growing from there. And then the Lord started putting in my heart to go to nursing homes. So we started going to nursing homes. And what I did is I got out of my phone. I got a book listing of numbers from, from the phone from Google. Thank God for Google. <laughs> I use Google for everything. So I Googled nursing homes in the city and I started calling and calling and calling and telling them who I was and asking them if I could come and do a, a church service for the elderly. And I got uh, one, two, three nursing homes that let me come in. So we started doing nursing home ministry. Um, every, every, we, 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 we'd go and pray for the, for the people at the outpatients at 8 o'clock to about 11. And then from 11 o'clock to 1 to 12 o'clock, we'd be in the nursing homes doing a regular church service. And they love it. I mean, it was beautiful. You, just to see the, the happiness and the joy of them coming in there. I'm so happy to see you, to, to, to love them. Because a lot of them, I hate to say it, a lot of them, their families forgot about them. You know, yeah. um, sad. But they did. So we, we started, we were doing that. The Lord just had us doing all kinds of uh, ministries. Uh, and um, how I got the name of Camry, it was it's also a miracle. Uh, one of a lady friend of mine, a pastor had given me a vehicle because my truck had broke down. So I got a camp a vehicle called Camry, okay. Toyota. <laughs> And um, a pastor gave it to me. He said, the Lord, I want me to give this to you. I said, wow. So 1995, I was happy as I could get it. Because I could do my ministry. So anyway, the lady friend's putting the license plate on in the back. And I'm in the front putting the license plate on it. Because she helped me get, get around so I could get it on the roll. And she goes, oh my God, Camry, Christ, I was going to reach you. I go, what'd you say? I couldn't believe it. And that's how Camry came about. Christ, I was going to reach you. The Lord even gave us that name for a license plate by the name of the car. So that's how we ever started. It was, it was all prayer. Walking the streets, praying. But let me tell you something. i got to back up because, you know, during that time, you run into a lot of resistance. Not everything is peachy and rosy. We ran into a lot of resistance. We had people who call us all kinds of names. We had people, uh, I had people spit in my face. Um, had people uh, say you you know curse you out. Had one lady she she like she come faithfully every morning. She had her bed down to Lilith across the street and she would just curse us out, call us every day. I mean it was unbelievable. So we just kept praying and praying for her. And uh, that's a testimony. I ended up uh, praying for her and uh, she just melted in my arms like 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 a, like a lamb. The Holy Spirit just really ministered to her right there at the house of mercy. That's a mission. Uh, here in Rochester, um, where a lot of homeless people go, drug addicts, alcoholics, uh, people that are down and out. So we used to go there and pray with them too. And we went, we also used to go to uh, let's see, another food cupboard in Rochester um, on East Avenue. We used to go there every morning. You may say, how do you fit all this in? Well, when you're working for God, God makes the time. Like Pastor said, he freed me up. He really did. He set me free from, from uh, working. He provided me with an income that I get. So he, he enabled me to be able to do these things. And uh, God will do that. 
When, when God calls you, He will provide everything for you. He showed me that. He really did. I've got three vehicles from the Lord since I've had Cameron. Three vehicles. I got a beautiful van now that the Lord was, was given to me by an anonymous uh, donor from Palmyra. So don't worry about what you need if God's calling you to do the work of the ministry. He will provide. And He'll do it in a way that you know it's done. Uh, I give all the glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. As I said, I never wanted ministry. I ran from ministry for years. <laughs> I was 12 years old. I got saved in the boys. Lord, I just want to stay in the shadows. I don't want to be out in public. I just want to serve you, love you, but let somebody else do it. But see, if God's chosen you, you're it. That's <laughs> 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 it. You're, you're it. You're, you can't get away from it. You can't get away from it. So the Lord did all these different things, and they were all training uh, for what He did to me now. You have to have that compassion of Jesus 
Because that compassion will pull you over all the hurdles that the enemy's going to throw at you. Because he's going to throw everything he can at you. I'm not saying this to discourage you, but I'm saying this because this is what happens. Many times I went back home to my little apartment and cried. I cried. I said, Lord, I can't do this. You know why? Because the pastor Dominic set me free. The Lord used him because he said the greatest words that ever be said to a man or anybody to serve the Lord. You know what it was? He just said it here today. If you don't hear anything, remember this. It's not our responsibility to save anybody. It's the Holy Spirit's. All our responsibility is to do is to give them the word and to love them and pray for them. But don't carry the burden where why don't they get saved more? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? Because it will kill you. It will crush you. It crushed me. I would go home at night and I would cry. I said, Lord, I'm doing everything I'm trying to do, but they don't come. It seems like they're just using me, Lord, for the food. They don't want nothing to do with you. And God sent Pastor Dominic in my life to tell me what he just told you today. Remember those words, because they set me free. Because no longer do I have to carry the burden of the Lord. We can't carry the burden of the Lord. Can't do it. It'll crush you. It's too heavy. So don't think that you have a responsibility to save anybody because you're not. You just give them the word. God tells you to pray with them, pray with them. Whatever. And then you go on your way. Because when I went with him on the crusades, I said to myself, well, I even said to myself, brother, we should connect with a church. <laughs> with this, he says, no, Randy. Right. This is not our responsibility to do that. Blow in, blow up, blow up. <laughs> I fought with that for a while because it, it didn't make sense to me. But guess what? The things of God don't make sense. Think about it. He chose so many like the foolish things of the world that can find a lie. Amen. None of us, none of us deserve salvation. But God chose us. People who announced my name and said all these things about me, maybe about you. But look what you're at now. You're in the kingdom of God. Hopefully getting prepared to become an evangelist. And I'm going to say this. An evangelist, he talks on it, is a gift to the church. It's a gift. You are a gift to the body of Christ. Because our condition is to go and preach the gospel, to edify, build up, and like Pastor Donald said, to send it out. Amen? And you're a gift to the lost. They need us out there. They really do. They need the church. And there's a hunger out there. I'm sure Julio's going to touch, Pastor Evangelist Julio will touch on that. There is a hunger out there. There really is. People want to know about Jesus. Nice. And all you got to simply do is ask them, can I pray for you? Yes. That's how I started. Can I pray for you? And I was amazed how many people wanted prayer. I mean, we were praying for police officers. We prayed for firemen. Well, one time, the Lord had me, I was driving down the road, and the Lord said, watch this, and he, I stopped. When you're doing this, and it sounds funny, but the Lord, you feel like the but the Lord does speak to his people, the Holy Spirit. And he will speak to you. He'll guide and lead you because he says that. And he had me stop at this fire department, and I was nervous. And he said, I want you to pray for all the firemen. And they're all doing their thing in there. And I'm like, wow, Lord, how can I do this? So I pulled over and I got out of my little camper car. Ah! I was just, I was just starting. I didn't have the outreach. And I walked up to the fire and I said, You're not going to believe this, gentlemen, ladies, but I want to pray for you. God told me to pray for this. Please do it. They took their hats off and they wanted prayer. I prayed for the whole fire department. Right there. Ah, but God will do things like that. Amen? So be prepared. Because when you're out there doing evangelistic work, you never know what's going to happen. You never know where he's going to take you. He's taking us to hospitals. We went to hospitals and we went to the ICU. And I don't even know how we got in there. We got in there. God will make ways. And there was just people sitting in there. Nobody was there with them to counseling. I walked in. I said, excuse me, I'm an evangelist. This is an evangelist, Anna. We'd like to pray with you. Oh, please pray with us. Our loved ones in there dying. And we had like six, seven people in a circle praying. And the nurse walked in and didn't know what was going on. But God would do those things. And they're beautiful things. Like Pastor said, doing the ministry of Jesus Christ is a joy. Unspeakable for the Lord. When you go the right way. And I had to learn. I had to learn. I had to learn. You're going to learn. And uh, the Lord's Holy Spirit's the best teacher. He's the best teacher. And uh, 
Let's see what else. Um, oh, I had, to, I had to listen, man. I had the opportunity to go to Kenya, Africa. Can you believe that? I just came back with Pastor Dominic and Pastor Russ, or Pastor Paul Gray, and another brother. That's God. Because I never dreamed I'd ever go to Africa. But that's what God would take you when you be obedient to Him. And uh, <laughs> follow Him. Follow me, Jesus said. I'll take you to the ends of the world. Amen. So I pray every one of you, in the name of Jesus, will be obedient to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to work in your life and to change you and to do what He wants you to do. I gotta say this to these two real quick. Can I pass that school? You're from you're from Kings uh Clinton Spring. Clinton Spring. I was just out there. My son suffers with a drug addiction, heroin. And I took him out there to uh uh, the, the, yes, uh, the, the detox place there. And as I was walking, driving through that city, I looked and I felt there's such an emptiness, there's such darkness, there's, there's really not much gospel there is. Hardly any gospel at all. Listen, you two, God's going to use you two, man, in the name of Jesus. You better hold out because God's got great things for you, man. You're going to go back there and God's going to use you too. Just be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Because there's such darkness. I felt it as I was going through that time. And I said, Lord, there's nothing. There's, I know there was like the Holy Spirit saying, there's no gospel here. And you, you just witnessed that, testified that, right? I just feel the Holy Spirit telling me to tell you this, that uh, he's, he's chosen you guys to do some work out there. Amen. Amen. And stay with the person you're with because God's using him to teach, teach you and train you. But, wow. Give it a great ministry. I believe it all my heart. In Jesus' name.